Hello everyone. I would like to share my interview experience at Intel with you all today. I am selected in the interview and I am now working at Intel. I will share the questions asked in the interview and the answers I had told and I will give some suggestions to you all. The first question was tell me about yourself. It is the most common question asked in all interviews. I told my name, college name, hobbies and friends. My tips are that keep it short and clear. You can tell your grades also if they are good. And you can tell me your, tell your project name. And you can tell your co-curricular or extracurricular activities if you, if you have. And uh, my suggestion is that don't tell about your family. Mm. And the next question is tell about your project. It is the very important question because it's, it will create an impression on you to the interviewer. So go back to the BTEC and MTEC projects, go through them and uh, uh, keep, the, keep notes of the overview and the functionality of your project. You should tell the overview, components used and the functionality. The interview may ask the components used uh, may ask about the components used, what are the ports, uh, how many pins, like that. They, they may ask. So you should be very clear. So go through them. The next question was, what is cache memory? My answer was, it is a fastest memory, volatile memory, and it is used to balance speed gap between CPU and RAM. And it is used to reduce the CPU waiting time. This was my answer and the next question was what is pipelining my answer was the task is divided into subtask and are performed simultaneously and um, I told that it is used to reduce the latency instruction latency if you are doing instruction pipelining and the next question was what are pipeline configs after this question he asked this question what are pipeline configs I had answered that the conflicts were data hazards, control hazards, and resource hazards. And then he asked, what are data hazards? My answer was read after write, write after read, write after write. And the very next question was, why there is no read after read? My answer was that the read, the read operation does not affect the register. So there is no conflict of read after uh, read. After read. He was impressed with my answers. I think so. Then uh, the note is that the interview had asked these three questions. What is catchy memory? What is pipelining? And what are pipeline conflicts? Because I had mentioned that in the resume that I have knowledge on microprocessors and microcontrollers. So be thorough on the topics which you have mentioned in your resume. If you have mentioned uh, uh, computer architecture and organization, go through the basics of that. So there is a chance that he may ask the uh, questions on the topics you have mentioned in the resume. Then the next question was difference between melee and mori. My answer was that melee depends only on the present state and inputs. Mori depends on only present state. I am telling the answers only I have told. You can go through the uh, Google and search for the answers, better answers. The next question was difference between blocking and non-blocking assignment. This is the most asked question in the interview for a VLSA or uh, digital communication candidate for the interview on VLSA. So be clear on this question. The answer was in blocking assignment, the statements are executed sequentially one after the other. So the execution of one statement blocks the execution of remaining all other statements. So these are called blocking statements. It is denoted by is equals to. They are generally used for combination of circuits. And the, uh, in, in uh, non-blocking assignment, the statements are executed parallelly. And 
these are generally used for uh, sequential circuits it is den uh, denoted by less than or equals to less than equal to Mm. And the next question was, when does a latch is inferred in case statements? My answer was that when a case is not mentioned or the default condition is not mentioned, like uh, if one of the case is not mentioned in the case statements, then a latch is inferred, which will lead to sequential circuits. The next question was write a program for clock generation in Verilog. I had uh, told the program which is pretty simple. Initial begin clock is equals to hash phi clock and this the, the delay depends on the type period of the clock. So it may be it. I had told this. The next question was types of delays in Verilog coding. My answer was two types of delays. One is inertial delay and the second one is intra assignment delay. In, in inertial delay, the state uh, the assignment is done first and then the delay is given. Like the first, the B plus C assignment is done to A first and then the delay is given. In intra assignment delay, B plus C is done, then the delay is given, then assigned to the A. This is the difference between inertial delay and intra assignment delay. I had answered this. And at last, he had asked two puzzles. Um, I don't want to share these puzzles because it will definitely vary. So go through the puzzles. Means uh, you can go through the puzzles um, or you can spontaneously answer them. This was my interview experience. I had answered almost all the questions and I was pretty confident that I will select in the interview. Thanks for watching.